So, uh, Vishal, both are from InfraCloud Technologies, and Vishal is an engineer and CTO at InfraCloud Technologies. He helps companies transform their businesses by using technology and coaching people. Um, and he's also a contributor to Fission, uh, which is a fast and secret serverless function for Kubernetes. And Vishal is also an organizer for Pune Kubernetes and CNCF Meetup. Uh, he loves good books, running to high altitude mountains and history. And coming, uh, talking about Ninath, uh, he is a certified in Kubernetes administration, which is CK, as well as Kubernetes development, which is CCAT. And he's also very enthusiastic in technologies around cloud native space. Uh, and on day to day basis, he works and has an interest in mainly GitOps, Kubernetes, and observability stack. Uh, in the current role, he helps customers as, um, as a DevOps and SRE engineer to adopt uh, the cloud native technologies. And outside the technology, he likes to read and travel and play cricket and badminton. So, in a few minutes, our session will start. So, I'll be handing it over to our speakers. And again, to make sure, uh, we, we, we're going to have QA as well after the session. So, uh, be prepared with your questions. We will have our speakers here and they'll be answering your questions. So, yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you for being present here. Uh, my name is Ninad Desai, and I'm working at InfraCloud as a staff engineer. So at InfraCloud, I mainly work to help clients to handle their needs in regards to infrastructure design, scale, uh, modernization, or stability around their application using cloud native stack like Kubernetes and a bunch of other tech stack that normally falls under the C uh, CNCF product. Uh, my name is Vishal. Uh, I'm CTO and founder of InfraCloud Technologies. My interest lies usually around Kubernetes, serverless, uh, open source, and then org design and org scaling. Cool. So you have definitely heard the classic saying that you know move fast and break things. I think this was popularized by the Facebook CEO around 2014 or so, and this is pretty popular. Uh, you know, saying that as a, as a product or as a company, you should move fast and you know break things. Right? But I think we are living in a world which is changing now. Uh, we definitely want to move fast uh, without actually breaking things. And we will learn today how to achieve this in the context of software with progressive delivery uh, in, in context of software development, right? So before we go further, let's understand the word progressive. What does it mean? So if you take the literal meaning of the adjective progressive from a uh, dictionary, uh, it, it means something that happens gradually or in stages. And I think this is a crucial, uh, you know, uh, thing to keep in mind as we, as we progress into uh, talking about progressive delivery. So one thing uh, I want to clarify upfront is uh, progressive delivery does not mean you stop doing continuous delivery. And in fact, uh, if anything, progressive delivery uh, rests on the foundation of solid continuous delivery and uh, you know builds on top of uh, that, uh, I would say. So what is progressive delivery? You know, I think this diagram sums up uh, the concept kind of very nicely. Uh, the idea is to roll out software in production, or if not possible in production, as close to production as possible in an incremental and gradual way. And this could mean you could release it to a set of users or sometimes to a set of testers. But the goal is to do this in production because anything else is not like production. Now you must be wondering why uh, you know that is so important, right? So uh, testing in production like environment, right? So let's take a couple of scenarios slash examples. Uh, we have tried this, uh, you know, approach. For example, companies try to set up the whole thing on a developer's machine, but it is anything like real setup. The issues come from resource exhaustion or lack of resources on your developer machine, or sometimes uh, you can't run Elastic or Kafka in a production grade, uh, you know, scenario on your dev box, right? And on top of that, you definitely don't have the data available uh, on your local machine. Now, uh, other scenario is, you know, you try to test in production like environments, like staging, for example, right? Uh, staging is often touted as production, but it's still not the same as production. And if you're in industry, uh, you know, where compliance is huge, for example, HIPAA or PCI, your database is never the real uh, database or size of database. It's like a smaller replica of the actual database, right? Similarly, you may not have observability uh, in the production environment uh, the way you have in you know, uh, other environments, for example, right? Uh, lastly, uh, today it is not just code or application anymore. You know, uh, it's all systems which are sometimes very unique to production. Uh, for example, your configurations, your infrastructure as code, the kind of traffic that you have—it's very hard to replicate uh, the way you have it in production 
uh, it's almost hard to replicate in any other environment right so no matter what you're not testing uh, the way you test in production that also means some behaviors you will see only in production not in other environment right and that's where this you know uh, funny adage comes in uh, picture that it works in my staging the way we talked about in probably previous decade it works on my machines as well right cool so uh, now we are living in a fairly new world where uh, things have changed quite a bit in the way we deploy in the way we observe the way we manage and stuff like that right but the way we do uh, software testing uh, you know whether we where we bring everything together and try to do uh, testing on that whole entire setup hasn't changed a lot uh, and it still you know follows the very traditional practices in a way i would say so you just don't need to stop testing you know because you are in production in fact testing in production uh, is actually happening literally by users on continuous basis but we need to leverage the state of the art tools the state of the art uh, that is available in production in a way that they are able to test it without impacting you know anybody else for example you can do canaring you can do traffic shifting or shaping and stuff like that so you of course have seen the classic meme uh, that you know i don't uh, always don't test my code but when i do i test it in production now uh, this might have sounded like a meme probably a couple of years ago or maybe half a decade ago but technically i would say it's reality today we can test in production uh, in a in a very sophisticated and a very you know interesting uh, manner we say now before i hand over uh, in the next slide to uh, nina uh, nina did a progressive delivery workshop as part of the kcd bangalore that happened a couple of months ago and he extensively talked about argo rollouts i highly recommend you suggest uh, i highly recommend you check it out and and you know learn about argo rollouts specifically uh, over to you nina yeah so thanks ishan so now we have understood how progressive delivery could be a game changer to build a robust and resilient system in a true sense so next question would be uh, how to do it and what are the ways to do it uh, so next couple of slides we will be talking around the same so one thing i want to clear uh, the air around is deployment is not release these two terms unfortunately we use interchangeably but they are not same deployment is basically creating a new version of your application or uh, deploying a new code versus release is basically all about letting the traffic from your end users to receive and respond by the new version of your application okay and so as vishal has already stated right so these deployments can be uh, in production can be tested in three ways uh, you can test it at uh, deployment after deployment by using some other form of integration test or you can do it uh, after the canary or any other kind of release uh, and you can also do in post release section where you are continuously monitoring it and checking uh, by some or other way of uh, let's say doing a testing either ab test or chao test in post release part of the same okay so yeah and progressive delivery is not always about canary or blue green or ab form of it's much more than that uh, so you must be wondering like how we should do this deployment where we are deploying but not releasing to the end user so there are different techniques available for the same and let's look into them uh, now okay so first technique i would say is the feature packing so this is essential technique uh, where basically you can inject a flag on top of every functionality or code block that you develop or you have written and by some or other way you allow users or by yourself to enable that flag and after only enabling that flag the new version of your application is available for your users okay so sometimes you might have seen the case where you have been uh, logged into the application and it shows you at the right on the top saying we have our new version available would you like to check it and once you click on it it takes you to the newer version of the application that's where feature flagging uh, is used apart from that there is this very popular and i think most of us have heard about uh, blue green technique where what you do is ultimately you have let's say like a version 34 of your application you want to move to the new version let's call it as a version 35 so you will create exact replica of or you can say exact infrastructure with new version of your application 
you do all your end to end testing and once you are confident enough that my new version is working fine then only you move to the new version and cut down all the old version of your application apart from that there is another technology uh, technique which we can say uh, can re so uh, this is quite massively been adopted as part of progressive delivery but uh, do you know why we call it canry itself and not anything else so the term canry deployment comes from a old uh, coal mining technique so these mines were always containing some or other hazardous gases that could uh, kill the miners so canry birds were more sensitive to airborne toxins than humans and so miners used to use them to detect these things and so similar approach is with the canary deployment where instead of putting the entire individuals in dangers like in case of big bang deployment we instead start releasing our new version to a small subset of users we see if they are able to do all their activities correctly or not all the functionality is working fine or not and then gradually in incremental way you move to the next version or uh, next possible incrementation in your uh, roll out to all the end users apart from that there is a new technology or i would say technique called as a ab testing so uh, let's say i am a part of a product development team itself and we would be having always these kind of huge debates where one person is saying you know we should have our login icon at the right top side corner someone is saying no we should have it at the center or someone is saying at somewhere else so when you have these kind of debates and let's say you are not able to understand what should be uh, the approach that our users would highly like to add up and that's where what you can do just like in blue green deployment you can create another set of your uh, application and you roll out both the applications versions version a which might be having the login button at the uh, center another version may be at the right and you dis, uh, distribute it geographically and then based on the adoption percentage from your users or you can say amount of client been converted you can figure out which version is likely been adopted and uh, liked by users and then you can go for that version and cut down the other version apart from that there is this also a technique called as a shadowing or dark uh, traffic testing or you can say mirroring so where what we do normally is we uh, copy the user traffic and send it to your old version as well as new new version of your application so while the new uh, version will also receive the traffic but it will not respond to that uh, request only your old version is responding so these dark uh, launches or you can say shadowing kind of uh, testing does help you to find out the issues uh, which your functional or end to end testing will not be able to figure out in a control environment okay and apart from that there is also this technique called as a tap compare which is a kind of internal testing mechanism i would say so what we do normally in these kind of technique is capture your production traffic and uh, route it to the new version as well and compare the result of your old version as well as new, new version and based on the response decide whether should we move forward or not and apart from that there is this also a method where is uh, where are, where you can use canary with traffic shift, uh, shifting mechanism so you can use service meshes or Eng nginx kind of ingress controllers where you would gradually send traffic as part of your canary re release and at the same time with help of your internal teams maybe you can either uh, pass some custom headers to your nginx controller and do all the testing at the same time you would be able to use the user traffic as well to determine whether we should promote ahead or not and i will let now vishal to take further good so uh, we looked at various techniques you know where where we can do progressive delivery right but uh, this is you know technically a lot of work and and you know uh, it, it requires you know fair amount of preparation so uh, first thing i would say is uh, in context of your organization this takes time and if you look at this paper from facebook uh, you know folks right they only try to do it only for stateless services in the beginning and even that that took them probably a year to get it right and and you know get it uh, perfect so to speak right only after they got it right over the first year or so 
it actually rolled it out to other services and other uh, you know areas of the application list right so so it, it it's important to spend the time and get it right uh, rather than uh, you know hurrying into it i would say uh, beyond that it also takes preparation uh, because uh, it's important that if you are doing something like this uh, where you are testing in production you don't want to have any unintended consequences on other users so to speak right for example you can't uh, if you can't make sound decisions about uh, you know whether your new version of the system uh, is producing more errors or less errors uh, you probably will not be in a good shape uh, you know to make that call right so you need to have a good observability system similarly you need to have a good rollback and you know roll forward system you need to have the right uh, schema you know changes uh, and backward compatibility uh, built into it so to speak right so such changes will need that tech uh, changes but also you as an organization or a team are culturally understanding the trade offs and making the right decisions over here this key now let's look at the look at aws uh, you know uh, rollout example that the public talked about so typically our application goes through four phases we have source code then we build test and you know eventually take it to production through some sort of pipelines right but if you look at uh, in a zoomed in way uh, in each of these uh, areas how aws does it uh, for their services so in the source and build uh, area itself right uh, they have automated pipeline for every a uh, piece of things that get deployed uh, whether it is infrastructure or application code and it goes through a bunch of you know unit tests build static analysis and all that stuff right so there is fair amount of diligence being done in source and build phases as well now if you move to test stage for example uh, in the test stage also uh, there are at least a few pre prod kind of environments that it goes through and every environment has its own purpose for example alpha or beta might be more about understanding the functionality whereas gamma is almost like production where your monitors and other alarm are as good as production and you get a pretty good sense of how good the service is performing right uh, now at aws scale uh, when you deploy to production which is the next step in the logical uh, you know movement you don't want to again you know affect because your users are globally uh, spread and you know they are using uh, at various time zones and stuff like that right? so the production rollout actually follows a fairly detailed wave based approach basically right you move slowly from one stage to other stage and and based on certain uh, decision points you know in the previous stage you decide whether to continue to next stage or you you know kind of uh, pause at that stage and you know roll back and stuff like that right one very important concept there is bake time and i think this is a fairly uh, you know bake or soak time as it is called uh, you know in many companies slash industry right the idea is that a lot of times when you deploy a change the effects which might be good or bad are not immediately visible in you know 5 uh, 10 minutes right sometimes it might take 20 minutes sometimes it might take an hour right so based on how uh, far ahead in the, you are in the pipeline of progressive delivery and how huge the change is how huge the impact could be your bake time could be sometimes an hour or sometimes could be 12 hours before you decide to move to the next stage right and then you have some metrics that you have thought through and designed beforehand where you take a call whether this is a positive sign we should move ahead and and those metrics are meeting you know their uh, required uh, you know kind of uh, anticipated uh, levels basically right So, having talked about this, I'll let Anina continue and talk about some of the tools in the space. Yeah, thanks, Richard. So now let's move towards which tools can help to do some kind of code correcting. I would say part of this progressive delivery. I mean, which tool can help you to enable progressive delivery at your uh, requirement? So there are currently a couple of tools available like uh, Argo CD, Flagger, Spinnaker, La uh, Launch Darkly, or Optimizely. uh flagger and argo cd are uh, quite the major one being uh, used i would say uh, one is developed by argo community and another by vworks teams uh, my personal opinion is both tools are really cool uh, both tools have had to had really good features except that argo cd comes with a gui if someone need understanding maybe okay which tool i should get uh, i should go for i would say if you have flux cd or system already in place maybe go for flagger if you have been already using argo cd then maybe go for argo rollouts being a part of the same family okay and so i have just put this example here uh, which is a part of my workshop that i recently conducted hands on workshop around how you can do progressive delivery using argo rollout so i just wanted to demonstrate how you easily can uh, convert your existing deployment objects into the rollout all that you need to do is first have a Argo rollout controller installed on your Kubernetes cluster, and then let's say if you have a deployment, instead of deployment, you will convert it to kind as a rollout, and instead of strategy as a rolling update, which is a kind of default, you can change it to either canary or blue green, 
and now in terms of service if you have one service you will create two services one will be uh, handling traffic from canary and one, one will be handling traffic from from your older version okay and as i said right when you are doing this canary you would might need to do some kind of testing so either these testing can be performed manually but best and preferred approach is to do it in automated way only and let system decide whether i should now go for the new version or not and so for that argo rollout has provided this feature called analysis template where you can customize create a job or you can use pretty popular tools uh, and matrices generated from tools like datadog prometheus and so on and decide whether your newly rolled out service is working correctly or not and these are some of the best practices i would say uh, that uh, i learned from my experience as part of infra cloud team where we happen to help uh, a healthcare industry based client to achieve the progressive delivery using canary and uh, traffic splitting technique using argo rollouts so make sure to run it enough times and make sure to understand that this is not what you are going to get correct in one shot uh, it need to be done as a part of a iterative process okay and yes uh, in case if you want to do some more deep dive with hands on please do check out the recording from kcd bangalore event where uh, we have done this workshop and these are some of the blogs i would say that you can check out definitely to get some more in depth understanding around how progressive delivery can be worked out yep so that's it from our end uh, do let us know if you have any question and we would be happy to help you thanks for your time and uh, you know we are happy to take any questions uh...